International Monetary Fund has said the country will no longer be able to access its resources as a result of this Taliban takeover of power. The IMF was due to hand over $370 million to the Afghan government next Monday. For more on this, I'm joined by our international affairs editor, Philip Turl, who's with me here in the studio. Philip, first of all, how big a blow is this to the Taliban? Well, let's put it this way, shall we? This is the uh, IMF acting pretty quickly, because if you think that the Taliban just took power on Sunday, this money was due to be handed over this coming Monday, the 23rd of August. That decision had to be pretty rapidly taken by the International Monetary Fund not to hand over those funds. Now, this is not good news for the Taliban because they really could do with that money. Uh, it's not good news on two fronts. First of all, because it's going to affect the economy. And secondly, this is a leverage, I think, on the part of the international community and on the part of the IMF saying, while there is no coordinated response to the Taliban's takeover of power from the international community, there can be no coordinated response from the International Monetary Fund when it comes to sending funds into the country to try to stabilise the currency there. Now, on the other hand, you also have funds coming in from the World Bank, and the World Bank over the past 20 years has given Afghanistan $5.3 billion. Uh, the World Bank is also hesitating about handing over money to the Afghan, the new New Afghan rulers, the Taliban, uh, principally, I think, to put pressure on them. The reason here is that what the international community, those who are not willing to back the Taliban for the moment, want is for the Taliban to honour what they're saying or their promises, i.e. not to clamp down against women and young girls, not to uh, flog people in uh, public, not to introduce this very harsh uh, Sharia law in the country. And I think they'll be watching to see what happens in Afghanistan before there is any possibility that those funds and that money is going to be handed over again. And Philip, just on that point, where then is the Taliban getting its money from at the current time? Well, up until the time they took power, the Taliban have several important sources of cash and money coming in. The first one, of course, is drug trafficking and poppery production, which uh, brings in vast amounts of money uh, to the Taliban coffers. But the Taliban is also uh, profiting from extortion and kidnapping and uh, mineral exploitation. Uh, also, uh, revenues from tax collection. That's to say that anybody transporting funds through or goods through Taliban control areas up until this weekend has been forced to pay a tax, like the Mafia do in Italy. So that is a way that the, the, the Taliban are using to gain funds. Now, now that they're in power, they're in a much stronger position to try to take advantage of some of the wealth that Afghanistan has hidden underground. Uh, I mentioned mineral extraction. There are loads of minerals in Afghanistan which really have not been sufficiently exploited up until now. Uh, copper, cobalt, coal, gas, and more importantly, lithium. Why is lithium important? Because lithium is used in mobile phone and also electric car batteries. And many are saying, with the amount of lithium that is available in Afghanistan, if the Taliban can exploit those lithium mines, China has its eyes on those already, uh, then it could bring even more vast fortunes into the country and make uh, Afghanistan into a sort of Saudi Arabia as far as uh, lithium extraction is concerned. So for the moment, this is not good news for the Taliban that this fund, these funds are not coming in. There is pressure from the United States, from the European Union, for them to toe the line to respect what they're saying. But at the same time, you have Russia, you have China, you have Iran, you have Pakistan, who are all willing to do business with the Taliban already. So this is a way of, I think, the IMF saying, do what you say you're going to do, you can get the money. If you don't, then the money won't be coming in. OK, our, our international affairs editor, Philip Turl, thank you very much.